Don't do that when she's not watching. You're gonna be telling her, oh yeah, I checked your oil and I filled it up. Yeah, nothing did you do with it. Mm. See, there is like a little tip on here and this tip kind of squirts. Well, okay. But you go more in the front more and in less the front in the rear? And less in the rear. Why that, don't you just do what they say? Because they don't have any clue, otherwise they wouldn't build a vehicle which fails all the time. And if your wife asks you, can you look after my car before she goes on a trip, what do you do? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. <laughs> okay. The question was, if your wife asks you, can you look after my car before I go on a trip, what do you do? I'm going to show you guys what you do. Yeah, and by the way, the high lift is not ready for that job yet. Rule number one. You got to make sure your wife is around and she sees your effort. Because <laughs> if she breaks down and you told her, well, I looked all over and I didn't find anything wrong. And then she breaks down on the Autobahn with her Land Rover. You're going to be in trouble. You do this after work and you're kind of tired and you would rather sit inside on the couch and have a beer. You don't have to go crazy and do now an oil change or replace the brakes because you already did this last week. Here's proof, okay? She's around, she's looking at it. What are we doing? I read last week several posts on Facebook that the wife's discovery broke down. Well, it's not her fault. There's a thunderstorm coming up. Yeah, That's there the is. It's coming from over there, not where Christian pointed. There you go. That's the perfect opportunity to look for the car because you're going to be saved by the bell. Yeah, so I'm always stressed. The oil is not okay. The air always needs to be looked after. Can you focus on what yes. I'm lecturing? Well, you the very first thing you do before your wife goes on a trip is you check the oil, okay? On a Discovery 3, you have the luxury of a dipstick, dipstick. okay? <laughs> So on the Discovery 4, you're going to have to play around with the computer. Now, when you check the oil, and believe it or not, how many times I've seen people doing this wrong, because this is the craziest dipstick you can have, you got to watch really close where the oil level is, and you got to stick it in all the way, okay? Yeah, yeah. many people have problems reading. Okay, here, when I put this in, <laughs> and you pull it out, you don't want to look at this oil here now, but you can clearly see the oil level is here is halfway. This is where the oil level is, not here. Don't get confused. I can't believe I'm showing you guys how to use a dipstick. Okay, you stick it in all the way. You pull it back out. This is the level. So we learn now we can put in about half a liter. Yeah, yeah? but why if it's in the middle? It's one liter between min and max. Okay. okay. We don't want to overfill it because our driveway is angled in a slope. Don't do that when she's not watching. You're going to be telling her, oh yeah, I checked your oil and I filled it up. Yeah, nothing did you do when this thing failed. And you don't want to now point out stuff which doesn't look good if you want her to go on, uh, I mean, if she's going on a trip. And trust me, it's going to get more important than that. I'm kind of starting to get worried about our air intake hoses because they are just about 80,000 kilometers old, but he might have to cut that out and show them okay. what oil. If you have this thing and you pour it in there, it's going to make a big mess. Yeah. So you use a metering cup and you put in here now 400 milliliters. Don't 5W40. Even, you can watch plenty of videos from us. That's the right oil for the diesel. Without oh my God. doing without any a funnel. kind of spill, without a funnel. The first task is done. Now that wasn't so hard, okay? No. If she wouldn't be around, there would be no proof that you did this. All we do here is we make sure there's no leak or anything. I have the full of 5W40 C3. Most important. The second thing you do, very simple, is you check your wish wash fluid and oh, then you check most the garage important. if you have any and you find out you don't have any and then you explain to her that you forgot buying it, okay? That's, that can't be the case. I bought three gallons. It's with all these washings. Well, no, it's not my car. We have too many cars stop by and have their stuff filled up yeah this is like a car maintenance shop here in our lr time driveway except you don't have to pay anything yeah and nobody invites me for a barbecue or anything so in here it's a silicone bag with dishwashing soap and a rag you know when you drive on the autobahn 
it gets really dirty with bugs. So I can wipe down my windshield with some dishwashing liquid. It's the best, by the way. Okay, this is going to be a two hour video. Oh, you can cut all of that out. Of course, you're going to check the coolant next. Or at least if you don't know how to check it, you act like you're checking it. You go like, mm, yeah, this is looking good. You got to look all the way down here. This is where the line is down here. Okay, and this is full cold. There is the one line here and the other one is one below. So as long as the coolant is there in between, I'm all happy. Look at that, it's all empty. <laughs> this is where your wife looks, okay? And then you gotta be the smart guy telling her, oh no, you gotta look over here. <laughs> and that's where the lines are. And then she finds out, okay, this is all good and you checked it, you got your alibi. This is what it's all about. Power steering fluid, another fluid. You gotta make sure this is here in between min and max. Ours is a little bit above max because the car is also hot. Alibi taken care of. We look after the brake fluid. Same thing. Oh my god. The brake fluid is right here. You wiggle this container and you can see it's all full. But this is somewhere dangling around down here. Don't act like it's all good. You gotta fix it, okay? And then you're gonna be the hero. But don't send her on the road if this is like halfway down. If this is low, this is usually a sign that you have worn brake pads and the pistons moved out all the way, eating that extra fluid missing it in the container. It would also be wrong to just go then and fill it back up because you're filling a reservoir without knowing what the reason is. If she's gonna be going down to Death Valley in uh, that long, long stretch using her brakes and then they're gonna fail and she's gonna hit somewhere in a tree. Okay. There are no trees in Death Valley. Oh, that's true. Okay. <laughs> you gotta know what your air filter looks like, okay? Yeah. So we already done here under the bonnet. We checked all fluids. Yeah, it's really windy. I hope this... The... You can't say you're done now. You got to do something special. If you just send her out like this, she ain't gonna be happy. You install a new cabin air filter. This is always good and makes her being really impressed. Oh, he's gonna complain about the mess I have in my... Okay, open here. Oh. <laughs> and of course, you lecture about the price of the filter you bought. You didn't buy that cheap one, okay? No, you bought the charcoal one. Is it called mm -hmm. charcoal? Active and coal, it's, it's what it's coal. called. This is what's called an active coal filter. This has already given you a lot of credit because you've been probably dragging this out for like four years. This is all very simple. I open this lid, I pull this out, and see oh my God. all the Holy dust in crap, it. Holy crap, it's all dirty. You show her all the dust. If you don't show her how dirty the old one was, it's all useless. Okay, and I put this one right back in, stick it in all the way. So <laughs> now I can close this back up and yep. you hear it click and you're done with the air filter. You know, with the oil and so on, you, you couldn't really impress her a lot. But the filter already, oh look, it even came with an instruction for the discovery. How about that? For the discovery? Yeah, I bought the expensive ones. 10,000 to 15,000 kilometers. We don't Christian. believe instructions, okay? Even walkie-talkies. No, those are Aldi walkie-talkies, 10 years old. I want real walkie-talkies. Does your wife also use the words, I want so many times? I only say it because I really want the CB radio. This was the first successful step, you agree? You saw that she was really impressed, me replacing this filter. When you order it, of course you don't tell her that you ordered it. It's all part of the game. Look at my pet collection, you know. Land Rover Overland Spain, my Montana Rovers, and look what a friend from England sent me. I even got a Grenadier patch. Next item. A really easy one to do and that one is gonna blow her away. You clean or disinfect her air conditioning system. That makes really, really a big difference. And when she starts the car the next morning and she goes on your trip and you're already, you know, being bored at your workplace, she's gonna think of you and say, oh wow, this smells nice. Especially if you haven't done that two years. So you don't wanna do that and then do it a week later again. That will ruin the effect. You're gonna have to let her suffer two years with a dirty air conditioning and it smells like cold feet. Then you do this. Then you have the maximum effect, okay? I always look for one where I get a hose with it, like this one. Oh boy. I plug this together. Stick this hose in here. Sticking a lot of stuff in somewhere <laughs> today. After you fill this into your air duct system, 
you let it run lightly. It's warm weather today, so we don't even have to turn the heater on. We got 32 degrees outside. If you do this in the winter time, the car gotta be hot or warm, so your ducting will receive warm air. Mm. See, there is like a little tip on here, and this tip kind of squirts. Well, well. Okay, we're gonna stick that squirting thing in now somewhere. It's all good. <laughs> now look how I'm doing this. I'm kind of trying to stick this in as deep as I can without hitting anything on the inside. And then in one clear motion, this is duct number one of probably 15 or 16. I hit the button and I pull it out. Now it filled this with foam and I stopped it immediately before I pulled it out all the way, okay? Let me show you what that looks like if you pull it out too early and you squirt all over the place, okay? <laughs> then it goes like this. Oh my and, God. And remember, your wife needs to be around when you do this. At least she needs to see you pulling it out. See, pull it out, okay? <laughs> Don't worry, this stuff will completely dissolve. I make sure that this is not coiling up on the inside. I make sure it goes in down the duct, okay? Pull it out. That was it. Don't get it in that deep, but I'm gonna try it. Let me do the squirting now. Okay, up here, there are two important ducts, okay? And when you don't know where the ducts are going, you have to kind of feel it, okay? Don't stick it in with all force. Got it. I feel it. <laughs> okay. Ah, it's here. We'll, we'll leave it like this. Here. See, women don't use that. Oh, no, Men have that always open. <laughs> I should clean it for you. This would have been a good move. No, but I'm going to clean it tomorrow. In the foot well, there is one here. Yeah. There we go. You see how that smells Oh, already? that smells. Oh, that's really good. And we can let this now running on light air. And I route it down to the foot well here. See what happens? Okay. Anyway, the dirty ones. Yeah. And there I haven't go. done that one. <laughs> Perfect. Sometimes you get it into the wrong hole. And if you got a seven seater, you even have more ducts to do. Like Yeah, we don't. Floor. There. And I turned all vents on, so it's coming now out of all vents. Because yeah. I want this stuff to dry out. Maybe you can try and get the chopsticks back out. It was on sale. I mean, it was really expensive and I had to special order it. Who left his french fries or chopsticks here? Philip. We like sushi. How many chopsticks did he leave in there? <laughs> Every time we eat Asian food. Now I think I always bring two chopsticks. Before you guys send your wife on a trip, or even before you guys go yourself on a trip, learn how to use your diagnostics tool. Okay. Know how to read it, and then you can call your husband and tell him what happens and how to get it back on the road again. So why she's gonna call you and tell you, Oh, the dash lights are on. You got to be able to tell her, well, go scroll down to the DSC computer and tell me what the faults are. You vacuum the car out. You spent the entire afternoon. It took you four hours. You brushed everything off. You used some carpet cleaner and all kinds of stuff. It's not going to have the same effect until you use some textile cleaner, okay? It's yeah, a, a refresher. Cleaner. It's a refresher. It did in, in Germany, this is an extremely good brand. Once you're done cleaning with your car, which we haven't done yet because I'm just so lazy. See, I put this on here. This works absolutely amazing. Ours is called Fresh Laundry. I think that's a yeah. good thing. What <laughs> it's also I disinfectant. Put this, I put this wherever I have carpet, okay? Especially if you have a dog or something. Don't clean your carpet and everything. Put all that effort in without using this. So get a good brand in Germany. It's called here Sakotan. We learned all that when we <laughs> bought the mall crawler. was a dog car. We even used ozone in it for days and weeks. Yeah. Didn't do a difference. We cleaned it over and over. We didn't find any more dark hairs and it still had dark smell in it until we used this stuff. We don't have any affiliation and we don't want any affiliation, but I gotta tell you what's good. This stuff works. Just put it on here. That's it. Next lesson. You gotta ask your wife what's wrong with the car. If you don't do that, you may have missed the most important thing. So let me practice this. 
So is there anything else what's wrong with the car, honey, what I got to take care of? My solar panel is broken. Okay, and so... I'm going to park that car for three days and I'm going to run out of juice. What do you guys learn out of my little lesson here, what I'm giving you? Yeah, I had to back for three days. You can't ask her that last minute because she's going to hit you with, oh, there was smoke coming out of my radio. Or the one wiper blade doesn't go up and down anymore. <laughs> so you have to do that ahead of time. Because I'm so smart and I did all this, that's what you guys expect from me. I, of course, prepared this and I bought on time a new solar panel for her while camping. So we're gonna put this on, placing that old one. Now, if you guys know why this one broke, because it's not seeing any stress in my opinion, it's protected, there's no nothing falling onto it, it's not out there in the winter time. Why did it only last like three or four years? I would be interested. Is it because it's made out of Chinesium or? And of course I changed the size, so it will be a big debacle. Oh, isn't that just a pretty thing? Today I read again on Facebook that somebody wants to do a coil over because the suspension has some fault. There Take care even, of your suspension. There is even a Facebook group for Discovery 3 coilovers only. Oh my God. <laughs> so old one comes off. And Christian drilled the first hole. He almost drilled okay. into the solar panel. On one side. Did you guys see our diesel heater is mounted inside this box? Go check out the video how we put this in here and how it works. And my worst nightmare is a blown tire on the Autobahn. The lesson is, you know what air goes into those tires. We simply go by this tag, okay, so we have... Oh, there's a fully loaded tag. So we basically go 2.3, 2.9. So we're gonna go 2.5 and 2.8. But you go more in the front more and in less the front in the rear? and less in the rear. Why that, don't you just do what they say? Because they don't have any clue, otherwise they wouldn't build a vehicle which fails all the time. That is like the best explanation. So we, don't I like really think 2.3 in the front is, is not it's enough. No, okay? it's not enough. So you're going on the Autobahn, you're going really fast. See, we got 2.5 here. It's between 2.8 and 2.9. See, 2.5, this is good. 2.9, see? That's not 2.9, that's like 2.7. 2.7, <laughs> give it a little more. Yeah. Just an easy... You want to join me down here? Oh. Two bar, put it to 2.3 okay. watts on the sticker. Is that acceptable? Okay, yes. Okay, yes. bare tire is good. Gotta inspect that she has all the tools to take a tire off. Even if she's not doing that herself, she might be charming enough to motivate another male to change that tire for her. And there is the jack. Oh, you're gonna put it back together again. Yes, I will. How is this in here? I don't know, you gotta stick it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. They were too stupid. We wanna make sure that there's everything included in order to operate this jack, which is really not a bad one. What's in the other side? Oh. I sewed it in my bag. That's my chamber cable. I got a big beefy one because I got a big beefy uh, car. Now that's a nice spot for it, I gotta say, and a nice bag. Almost the last thing we gotta do is we gotta check the brakes. You know, they're fairly new. You gotta rattle the tires. That noise comes from the slide out drawer, not from the wheel. Because it's still out. It's still out, of okay, course. So, but you can see how much muscle I put into it, shaking the car. You can't go there. Oh, it's all fine. Yeah. While you're at it, checking the disc brakes, also check the tires, okay? Especially the sidewalls. If there's any obvious damage, you should be able to see that. Because she's been going off-roading so much. I'm also checking down here to make sure that it's, for example, no oil leaks or anything like that. See our tie wrap in here? This tie wrap cured our suspension fault, okay? I think this is the Guinness Book of World Records cheapest air suspension repair on a Land Rover, okay? Just stick the tie wrap in here to take the blade out of the connecting rod. Check out that video. The rear ones are really brand new. Maybe you guys watched this video. Nothing. Okay, grip it and do it. It's no, not moving at all. Here. 
they are good. There is no wheel bearing noise or anything. Perfect. Brake pads are good. You can't get it to move either. No, it's the last thing we do is the lights. And you give her clear, understandable commands. You don't want to have some sort of an argument just before she goes on a trip. Put your window down if you can. No. Or daylight running lights. That's good. High beam. That's the brake light. Pull it out to the second one. Oh, the first one is the front fog lights, the second one is the rear fog lights, and it's working. Reverse light is working. You don't want to forget the license plate lights. Very well, right side, left side. Isn't the Discovery a pretty car? This is really easy stuff. If you can't even do that, you shouldn't be driving a Discovery, I would. No, you can drive a Discovery without knowing anything, okay? Just like a Toyota driver. You know where the door and the ignition key is. That's yeah. fine. That's it for this week's video. And we're busy on this project here, which you will be seeing soon finished. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please think about subscribing. In any case, if you didn't like it, don't unsubscribe. Wait for the next video. And we thank our Patreons very much for their support. This is highly appreciated. And we'll see you next Sunday. There she goes on her 600 kilometer one-way trip. Camped in Berlin. How cool is that? Do you guys recognize that? So I got a package from Kev from the Isle of Wight out of the UK. Thank you very much, Kev. The Isle of Wight? Isle of Wight. Well, so open it up. Oh, you yeah, I see you cutting this knife, you know, above your knee. These are awesome. Oh, wow. So thank you, Kev Harwood from the Isle of Wight. We will put these on to Vera's Discovery very soon. Yeah. You'll see him in a video. Down the road. Yeah. Watch your fingers. What?